You are listening to Something Rather Than Nothing. Creator and host, Ken Vellante. Editor and producer, Peter Bauer. This is Ken Vellante with the Something Rather Than Nothing podcast, and uh, very excited to welcome uh, Black Belt Eagle Scout, Catherine Paul, known as KP. Uh, Catherine, KP, welcome on Something Rather Than Nothing. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a great pleasure. And for this episode, we have Benita Rancliffe, who is a uh, BBES uh, enthusiast, uh, music lover, and uh, has helped put this show together. Benita, uh, welcome onto the show again and uh, to the Something Rather Than Nothing audience. Yeah, it's a it's a great it's a great pleasure. And um uh, KP, it's it's great it's great to talk it's great to talk to you and um, uh, as some fans you know may know uh, of your music, there's a lot uh, going on uh, with a new album coming out and um, a tour that uh, looks looks dazzling uh, coming up in the near future. And um, uh, Benita and I were talking uh, about this, um, just uh, really feeling uh, excited at this moment at the beginning of 2023 and just seeing um, your great art uh, stretch out. So, um, uh, Benita, um, yeah. we were talking about the the tour and the album and yeah. Yeah. So you have a new album coming out and entering into this year, going out on tour. Um I am so super excited to meet you, even though it's kind of uh, via online format in this instance. Um, I just want to share kind of a big thank you to you. Obviously, we don't know each other really, um, but your art kind of played an instrumental um, uh, position in an interaction that I had with my daughter. So. I'm super excited to meet you. Um, she is um, uh, Yakima. Uh, her father's Yakima. And um, I can always kind of gauge her kind of emotional state by the music that she's listening to. She listens to a lot of hip hop, a lot of rap. And um, I was walking by her room one day. I was like, okay, is today a Tupac day or like a Polo G day kind of? She's 14, right? And uh, I heard your music in there. And I kind of stopped and I was like, hey, what's up? Like vibe change. And she's like, I want you to come and sit with me and listen to this artist. And so I kind of sat down with her um, and listened to the music. And she's like, I want you to know that like, this is how I see myself. And I was like, what do you mean? This is how you see yourself. And it was, I think it was Soft Stud that song, she was like watching the video and she's like, look at her shirt. Mm. Like, that's how I see myself. And I think it said something like, <laughs> you know, indigenous, queer, feminist. And I was like, oh, okay, this is how you see yourself. And so I just wanted to let you know, like, it was a huge catalyst in this very precious moment that I had with my daughter. And so you kind of being on the precipice of releasing this new album and going out on tour, I'm so super stoked. So thank you for <laughs> releasing your music and your creativity out there to the world. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to cry. I can't believe you're saying this to me. <laughs> I'm like sitting in this room. I'm like, wait, <laughs> this is real conversation I'm having right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's really special. I'm really, it's awesome that you um, were able to have that beautiful moment with your daughter so thank you for sharing that with me oh 100%. i um uh one of one of the yeah one of the and and that's 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 part of the uh, part of the excitement but um well and and one of the things i wanted to ask uh kp is um i i know you're connected i i'm originally from the east coast but i've been in the pacific northwest for 11 12 years and and i know you're a connection to the region but um thinking about world tour what's what's that mean to you when it comes to your music and and what's what's in there for you know for paris and and for the world and what what your expectations what do you think might happen with uh, what you sing and what you say you know 
I've traveled a lot in my life. I've been to Europe before. I've been all over. I've been to Africa. I've been to South America. But I've never toured um, and presented my art. I've never toured and presented my vulnerability other than like in North America. And so I don't know what it's going to be like. Um, because most of the time when I travel, you know, there's a, a language barrier. I'm trying to like understand people. It's a little bit hard. So I'm, I'm curious, like, you know, how my music is going to translate into different countries with different languages. And I think that's the one cool thing, though, about sound is that sound is something that I feel like um, is, is easier to understand um, rather than like you know, lyrics. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm excited to, to travel. I love traveling and I'm excited to meet new people. And I'm a little bit nervous that no one's going to show up because <laughs> I've never been over there to play shows, <laughs> but we'll see. It's my first time. Um, and yeah, I, this is something that I've, I've wanted to do for a while is to go on tour other than like in the U S and in Canada. And I was supposed to go on tour. I was supposed to do this like multiple times. It just hasn't happened. And so I think that that is a little bit, there, there's a little bit of the, of this, like, Oh, I was supposed to do this, that sort of feeling. And finally it's coming, you know? So there's, there's some of those feelings as well, but Yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, this sounds exciting. And people will show up. Uh, we don't know each other. And I don't have the diagnostics on the ground. But it will, the, the people will show up there. Don't worry about that. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, one of the questions asked uh, in the show has to do uh, with with identity and, and how we see ourselves and who we are. So I've asked the question before. So I, I've asked it different ways. I'd be like, you know, when you were born, were you an artist? And I've asked the question about identity and seeing yourself different ways but my question is for now is when did you see yourself as an artist when did you see yourself as as an artist uh and sometimes people say i've always felt like i don't know how to breathe different air and other folks are like 15 you know so when did you see yourself as an artist I think I, I realized that I was an artist when I was in, I think, the second grade. And I got really into drawing. I got really into um, just, like, kind of how lines form. And I was quite good at drawing. And back in, back in like, the second grade, I think people, like, the kids would always be like, you're good at drawing or like, you know, it, it was, it was something that people would tell me to. So I think that's the first time when I was actually like, you know what, I think I'm an artist because I can do this and, and people like it. And I think it looks nice. Um, but I, you know, my dad is, he's a carver and um, he does Coast Salish uh, carving and painting. And so I've always had that surrounding me. And I've always like seen him, seen him carve these lines, seen him paint. And uh, I guess it's just sort of uh, growing up like in, a, in an artist household, it, it just was normal. And so I think it was easy maybe for me to, to pick up a pen because I saw my dad doing it like everyday practice, like all, every day drawing things out, carving things out. And so I had this like general idea of, of what that kind of art was. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, I think that was, I remember drawing this picture of this blonde lady. <laughs> it was like this princess or something. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know why we were doing it. I just remember, I, I remember it. Um, and it was, uh, I think it was the second grade. No, maybe it was the fourth grade. I think it might've been the fourth grade. I think Mrs. Middleton was my teacher and I think that was the fourth grade. But it was grade school, grade school when I um, was realizing that I like art, I can do art. Um, and I think that that sort of grew throughout high school. Um, so my dad, he would teach this carving class at our at our high school and I took his carving class. And 
then because it's like a family thing, I just sort of started doing it. Like my dad and I had an art show together when I was in high school. And then I just sort of continued these lines, but it, that sort of art never really stuck with me. Like I, I, I don't do really carving right now. Um, but I think I got a taste of like what art could be in your life. And I think that's what honestly like made me latch on to music is because I saw this art in music and I saw, I saw something different and I wanted to go down that direction and that path for that passion. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's beautiful. And your contact with it, I find it fascinating just to see the different experiences and and how it can become encompassing with identity. You know, I see myself in recent years being more engaged with art and creating art and seeing that as my identity, which has been such a significant change in my view of how I see things and color and things like that. So I'm, I'm always really interested in, you know, how that happens and, and how, you know, and how that, how that feels. Um, you're an artist. You spend a lot of time creating art. Um, uh, you, you, I, I want to mention your, your album at the party with my Brown friends. This is an album for me that when I first listened, there's certain albums. Cause I'm, I'm in a bit of an obsessive type, particularly with sounds and songs and playing albums where like I get into this pattern where I play it every day, um, for like a set amount of time. So yours was like in the four to five month range of it, playing it every day. I just really, um, adore that album and it's very um uh it, it's very it's i found it tough to describe because it's inviting to be around the the, the music it's very inviting and uh i think that like being around it was why i'd be like Eat today i want that again and i want that again um so you're an artist you work very hard at creating art and thinking about art but one of the conceptual questions asked on the, on the show is what is art? What, what, what is it that you're trying to do? Uh, what is art itself? Mm. Yeah. I, I had to think about this because I, you sent over the questions and I was like, Hmm, these are big questions. They could, I, but and then I was like, maybe I'm psyching myself out. Maybe it's just easy. <laughs> <laughs> So then That's I just also started, possible. <laughs> yeah. So then I just started thinking, well, like, I feel like for me, art is something that you care about and it's something that's meaningful. And this is just for me. Um, Cause maybe I, I see some artists that are just doing some sort of like s- smashing of, of objects and that's art. And maybe they don't care about the objects. But for me, I think that art is um, putting meaning into something and having care for it. And coming, coming, coming at it in a good, from, from a good place. I think like when I was thinking about that question, I was like, go simple. That's what it sim- simply means to me is, and, but then I feel like care like has a lot of, of emphasis on it and it's, it's broad, it's expansive, like care has to do with so many different types of feelings in one's being. So. Yeah. 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 And that word being particularly important, um, that, that really stands out uh to me um but benita but, you and i have some discussions about the role of role. yeah one of the things i want to say about benita too is i mean like with the music um like i know with a lot of art we're friends and uh i know uh i really connect with her her love of, of punk and the vibrancy around that and she, i know it's like in talking about it has a particular role of what it intends to do but uh i know um benita you had a follow-up question to the what is art Yeah. Yeah. And Ken and I have talked about this before, like in, in creating for ourselves, um, you know, mind see, uh, when I create, it's always very internal, right. It's like kind of for myself and Ken has talked about like he creates for other people. And so if you think about like, what is art? You said it was kind of like internal, like it's a form of care. What is the role of art then? Or how do you see the role of art in kind of our broader human consciousness? Okay. So you said it's a form of care, but I said I care about it. Um, oh, I see. 
so it's interesting. I do see see it as a form of care. Yeah, yeah. But I was saying it's something. If I if I do art, I'm putting care into it. Um, but I guess it could be a care for myself as well. It could be reciprocal. Um, can you repeat your question though? Because I started thinking about that, and then I and then you asked this really big question. I was like, wait. <laughs> Uh, what, what do you see is the role of art? Oh, gosh. Yeah. I mean, I think art has a lot of roles. I think about it for my community where, where I live is art brings people together. Like in the Swinomish Indian tribal community, like I see art bringing people together. Um, and so for me in this little pocket of the world, that's, I think that's what it means, but I feel like it has a lot of meanings too, to, based on wherever you live, you know, like it can carry messages. It can be very, very broad to shift things in the world, but it can also be, I think like also very small and, and very much, uh, intimate moment between people as well. So I don't know if that answers your question, <laughs> and, but yeah, I, so maybe I'd tell you a little bit about where I'm from. Um, the Swinomish Indian tribal community is this really small um, people. Uh, we're a sovereign nation uh, in Northwest Washington state. And so I live in a really small community. This is where I grew up and I used to live in Portland, but then I moved back during uh, the beginning of the pandemic to take care of my parents. And so I've been living here and been um, being a part of this community again. And one of the things I'm thinking about is um, this last year uh, in June, our community came together and uh, we did a mural for Pride Day. Um, so we have like a Swinomish Pride Day uh, for our LGBTQ plus um, community members. And we came together and we like made this really beautiful um, salmon, these two salmons that um, our, one of our tribal members, uh, Raven Edwards, designed. And it has to look really colorful. And when I think about art, I think about things like that, that, that bring people together and um you know, you're coming together, you're trying to heal, you're trying to love one another. So I think that's what I think of first when I think of the world, because for me, the world is my community. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, KP. What, uh, what can you tell us about the land, the water, the sky? So with the title of that, that's the new album's title. My mind's big on all those type of things. What can you tell us about The Land, The Water, The Sky, your new album coming out? It's incredible. <laughs> hey, yes. <laughs> it's the best album I've ever made. And I'm really, really excited to share it with people. Have you heard it? I can't. I don't know who gets to hear it or not. I haven't heard it, no. Okay, okay. So, yeah. So, um, it, it'll be out soon, though. So, you'll hear it soon. Um, and some of the songs have have uh, come out. There's another song that's going to come out this week. Um, but The Land, The Water, The Sky, I wrote this over the last couple of years. And The Land, The Water, The Sky, uh, the name of the, of the album came from uh, the song Don't Give Up. At the very end of the song, I sing The Land, The Water, The Sky. And I wrote that song during a residency in Coast Salish Territory at Hedgebrook. And I attended the residency right before the pandemic. And then I was able to attend again uh, in November of um, not this year, but the year before. And so I started that song in the first time I was at the residency, but I just couldn't finish it. And then for some reason, when I came back to that residency again, it was still lingering and I, we, we had this moment together, me and the song. <laughs> um, and, and I was realizing like how important the land is to me and my mental health and my healing and my journey, how important, you know, the water is, how important the sky is and how much it, it, um, it, I guess is interconnected to, 
my relatives, you know, past, present, future in this specific area. And so that title came from, you know, those lyrics, but it really is just, I think, a theme for, you know, why I keep going on in this life and and, and the importance of, of living and, and being kind to myself and, and really trying to support myself and um, in, in like a self-care healing process of just of, I don't know, just of getting up every day and living your life, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, the land, the water, the sky, it's going to be out and to the world. And I, I treated every song. I've never done this before. Like it was going to be the single of the, mm. of the album. And so it took a yeah. really long time <laughs> to, to yeah. make. Um, but every song I was like, this is going to be the single, this is going to be the single, this is going to be the single. And so I, I never really, in terms of like process of like craft of songwriting, I've never really done that before. Um, I haven't written very many things, so I'm still in this process of like the, of, of, of art (laughs) of like figuring out the art side of it. Like this is a new process that I tried with this, this new work of art was okay. I'm going to put every single thing that I have into each song where, whereas I feel like the other albums, like it was uh, kind of like a, a diary entry of a certain time in my life, but this is too, it's still like, it's very, you know, documentary style of, of what, what of the last, you know, couple of years or so, but I feel like the energy around this album is very, is, is a lot more intentional. Um, so yes, yeah. I I noticed um one thing I wanted to mention. I, I noticed that there's a a show in Eugene after your Portland show um that uh, that was um very accessible. Like the cost to go there is very accessible. Part of a larger um, arts project uh, down there too. So I know you'll be starting off your tour uh, Portland. Then I believe uh, Eugene right after that. The show that I mentioned. Yes. Yeah. That's that. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't played Eugene very many times and um, it just so, it just so happened to work out where they, they wanted me to play this festival. And then we were trying to set up some regional dates for the release, uh, like a release show kind of regional thing. And so it, I think it, it happened pretty, pretty perfectly that it, that it was around the, the release date. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Before we get into one of the bigger questions, I just actually wanted to uh, mention. Um, it mentioned about like uh, I was hearing you talk about like different types of art and different types of art pieces, and however small. I uh, was at a comic book store yesterday, book with pictures uh, in Portland, and they had uh, an indigenous uh, zine. It was about comics representation within comics themselves. Um, it was put out a couple of years ago, but it was just before you even opened it, it had just this uh, power because there was a representation on the front, which was um, non-natives represented and native folk. And then it was uh, native representations by the artists and written. And on one side was this kind of like this kind of like face of sorrow and, and horror at misinterpretation. The other one was much more positive. So the experience of it as you flipped it was one of being like, oh, okay, that's horrible and that's terrible. But then there was the more inspiring stories. And it was a quick history of like major comics, uh, indigenous representation. And it was like eight pages. And I'm like, ah, oh, art. That's how immediacy is accessible. And it's right there. Um I just saw that zine in my head when uh, you were talking about just even the, 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 the smaller pieces. Um, big question, KP, uh, titular question of the show. Uh, why is there something rather than nothing? To keep going, I think, you know. You said it. That's your answer. <laughs> I love that it was. I like- just want to say I was talking. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to my partner earlier. I was like, "There's a question that's like, why is there something rather than nothing?" And then he was like, "You should just say like one word, 
Yeah. Is that something rather than nothing? <laughs> he's, he's on to it. And the problem is talking to you now and him, you're both on to it, which we'll cut this out. I can edit it once you're on to it. Um, I'm a, I don't know what to do with that because – what people really want to see when you ask that is okay, they <laughs> schmuck. <laughs> like, I don't want to deal with it. But there's always this, there's always this pause, and I always feel that somebody is gonna catch on like you do. So I might not let the secret out there. <laughs> the other thing is, the uh, the other thing is, I'm a huge Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy uh, fan, and Douglas Adams and his book Life, the Universe, and Everything, and the answer to why is there something rather than why is the universe exist is the number 42. So you mm-hmm. can also just say the other easy way out with the one and the answer is you could say 42 <laughs> and I say you won. That's the winning, <laughs> that's the winning answer. If you're into um, all that. Um, uh, KP, how do people, uh, how do you want people to connect with you? Um, your art, your music, tour, all the things, uh, people want to connect with you. Where, where should they go to find you and uh, experience your art and, uh, that? I love connecting in person. So if people come to my shows, that's the best way. Um, but if people want to connect in an online space, um, I am most active on my Instagram and I have like a Twitter, I have a Facebook I don't really go on there very much. It's the Instagram that I'm on. So, yeah, I'd say if you want to connect online, find me on Instagram. It's just at Black Belt Eagle Scout. Um, Or else I am going to be on tour a lot this year. So maybe I'll be coming to a city near you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I know um, Benita and I will be. Uh, be able to check out your show and and, and see your shows and um, uh, really excited to, to, to hear about these events and actually just like I told you from the beginning being able to to, to chat with you um, about these topics and even though you got sneaky on something rather than nothing that's totally cool because <laughs> philosoph- philosophers are just tricksters right like if like there's an idea of like you can get away like asking annoying questions and you know just keep going through life or do a podcast around it then just do it. <laughs> there's some, there's some license uh, to it. But um, I also want to mention Benita. I didn't even know the story about the story you told oh. and uh, just the experience with um your 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 daughter. And I gotta I gotta tell you, um, KP, I heard um a podcast recently. I think it was um I might have this wrong. Broken Boxes um podcast yeah. and yeah, Ginger's and, box. Ginger's oh podcast. my gosh, I just lost my mind. I was listening too early. I woke up early this morning and I was playing it and I was listening to it and you had played this song. She hadn't heard a song played, you know, more intimately online and her reaction. I was like, that's why people make art. Cause she's like, ah, I don't know what to do. I, you know, like it was just so open and real. I'm like, that's, that's why we do this. And uh, I just want to really let you know, I appreciated that and appreciated the the heck out of that show and, and that recording and, and Benita too, sharing, you know, about the experience of where like, don't be afraid to talk about how, how art is like makes a shift in a day, like changes things in a different direction. And that's kind of why we get excited uh, to talk to you and to bring you onto the show and uh, just learn some more. So, um, I just wanted to thank you, uh, Black Bell Eagle Scout, Catherine Paul, uh, so much for for coming on to this show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah thank and you for letting uh, me join in. And, I'm so and, appreciative and Benita, of this stuff. Hundred percent. Yeah, thank you guys. and uh, I I appreciate you. Uh, yeah, Benita, as a, as as a friend and art enthusiast, and uh, hopefully we'll be uh, we'll be the excited ones uh, and other friends that we'll be bringing. I'll uh, we'll be the excited ones, the you know, in the, uh, the boss of yacht, and be yelling in the crowd. <laughs> so you know, you know who, where the where the attention is coming from. Um, be safe in your travels. Best of luck um, with everything. Um, great pleasure meeting you and and, and chat with you. Um, uh, truly honored. Awesome. Thank you. Take care.
is something rather than nothing.